All right, hey guys, welcome again to Fire Alarms and Such, and it is time for another edition of What the Heck Is It? This is the System Sensor RTS 451 key switch. So someone asked that I do a little demonstration of exactly what this key switch is, what I think about it, and how to wire it up. So I am going to be showing you two different ways to wire it up. I'm going to show you how I wired it up into my particular setup, and then how it would actually be wired up in a real life scenario. So first off, this is the switch itself. You've seen it before. It's a basic red and green LED. Your key switch that goes momentary to reset and then, um, oh my gosh, what's the word? Locking over to test. And then to get the key out, you have to turn it back to on. So that's really the front of it. Not much else. If we turn it around to the side, I'm gonna pop it up here. If it will let me. Oops, I'm caught. There we go. This is the back here. You see there is a row of six terminals that I all ah bleh, that I have all filled up with wires. So terminals one and two, number one, that is your alarm LED. And then number two is just kind of like a I, uh, oh my gosh, what's the word? Oh, I'm sorry. Wrong thing, my bad. Number two and three, these are your terminals that you hook up to your reset switch. And then four and five, those are the terminals that go to your test switch. So this is your momentary switch, and this is your test switch up here. And then six is for your green LED. Then the LED share a common off of the negative, so you just have to uh, supply positive power to it. Uh, yeah, that's really pretty much it on the wiring block. So you got alarm LED, reset, test, and your green LED. So lay that, this would normally be wired up is your red LED would go to your duct smoke detector because this is a duct smoke detector key switch. So, you know, you have your detector way up in a duct, well not in a duct, but on a duct way up that you can't reach. So this is a remote test station for it. So what you do is there's three diagrams that you can follow. I'm not going to go into them, but here they are. This is the documentation for the key switch. So you see these are your duct detectors. It's pretty simple. You basically, you know, you take your red LED and you hook up to the red LED spot. Then you take your test switch and, you know, it varies depending on how you're doing it, but you take your test switch and you bring it to one of the relays on the detector. And then your reset switch goes to another relay on the detector. And then depending on the model of the detector, then you bring your green LED down and that's your indicator of is the head in, is the head in the base and is the power to the unit. So with that, I have mine wired up. It's a little bit different because I'm not using it on a duct detector. I'm running it through my SK5208, which I currently have powered off because you never do major work on a live panel. So the way that I have this wired up is, you know, number one for the LED, I have one positive coming in for my strobe knack. That's my knack that's always on. That's my non-silenceable because I want that red LED on all the time. And on this key switch, red always trumps green. So if there's power being applied to the green, but then power comes into the red circuit, it will automatically switch the LED to red. Two and three right here, these are my reset switch. I have going into their own zone on the panel, and then the panel I have that zone coded as an external reset, because you can do that on this particular panel, which again is the SK5208 by Silent Night. Four and five, those are my white and green wires. Those are going in, again, to another zone down here, and I have my resistors in here instead of at the end of line device, because it was just easier, things would, it would be a mess up there, and I don't really need it supervised. Those are my test, uh, my test switch. I have that wired in as a supervisory zone. So that way um, it's a non-latching supervisory. So when I'm done doing a NAC test, I can just turn it back and it resets the panel, or it doesn't reset the panel, but just resets the zone on its own and you don't have to fiddle with the panel at all. So that is coded as a non-latching supervisory. And then finally, number six, I have jumping over from number five. Number six, again, is that green LED. And basically what the jumper is doing is saying whenever, whenever these zones 
have power. So whenever the panel is ready and actually checking zones, the green LED will be on. And then once an alarm goes off, the positive from my NAC will come in and switch the LED back to red. And then if you want to reset it, then you close the contacts on two and three and it will reset the panel. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I think it's a, it's a really nicely made key switch. I feel like they could have spaced the terminals out a little bit better. I don't like the way that they're all kind of groups like this, but you know, it worked. Um, it's a good key switch. It's well made. It's sturdy. Um, I really like the way that the key feels when it turns. I have had no issues with it and I don't really know of a lot of people who have. You've just got to, uh, this little jumper trick uh, is one that I don't see a lot of people utilize to get the green LED to go. So you just basically have to jumper it somewhere where positive power is always going to be applied. So I got to find a pull station that works. Uh, here's one. Thank you guys for watching and as always. Have a wonderful day.